And the message at this moment to all of you, if you haven't figured it out by now, each of you is an energy generator. And what you choose to generate not only affects you, but those around you, then they affect others. We've spoken of the shift. In fact, that's all we speak of. Representing information and help for those who want to find out what they can do is different for humanity. Dear ones, what you do, how you act, or what you believe you can do, is really the catalyst for everything else. And we speak to you individually, but collectively. For what you should know, perhaps, that hasn't been emphasized enough, is the power you have collectively, with synchronous thought. Did we ever tell you about the confluence of compassion? When you yawn, you noticed other people yawn around you. <laughs> you ever ask why? Is it just a suggestion or is it more? We speak about the contagious laughter of how one happy person who is laughing in front of you can literally rewrite your emotions for that moment. What is happening when you see somebody who's so full of joy, laughing so hard? You can't just watch it, can you? You can't just sit there, can you? You start smiling and then you start laughing with that person. There is physics here. And if you want to call it the physics of consciousness as we've been teaching or the physics of compassion that we're going to teach. It's more than contagious in 3D. That's the hard part for you to visualize and understand that you create ripples. Ripples in the fabric of this planet's atmosphere, if you want to call it that. In its quantumness, if you wish to call it that. In the grid systems, if you wish to call it that. There are principles here that you don't really fully understand yet or haven't studied yet that creates a synchronous energy that spreads around you and around you and others and can go all over the planet. It's planetary joy, celebration, and the desire for peace. The desire for compassion. It goes a lot of places. Think about what you can accomplish in a few moments with others. It goes way beyond anything you have been told where there are two or more gathered together. Way beyond that. There will be a way of measuring this soon. More than there is now. There are those on this planet who are dedicated to measuring the effect of compassion globally. It's going to get better. There'll be instruments that will measure what a group can do to affect those around the planet. And you concentrate on that and you send peace to them. And let me tell you, th this is daily. This is all over the planet. This happens all the time. There is sorrow. I'm going to tell you that the new job is to place joy on this grid. And so those not only in sorrow, but those who would think about committing acts that would cause sorrow may change their mind. Changing consciousness is not fast on this planet and it's not easy, but the ones who do it are you. And you'll say, well, that was good. Make it more than good. Make it last with you. Make an impression. Understand the power you have collectively. The technology 
allows you to gather together in a consciousness, speak to each other across the globe in real time. What are you going to do with that? Have you thought about it? It's the confluence of compassion. It's catchy. Have you ever had somebody who was compassionate to you at a time when you really needed it? Who stood there and they had no agenda except to listen to you or watch you cry. No agenda. They just held your hand. They were just there. That compassion is something that you would then remember for a lifetime. And when you had the opportunity, you could hardly wait to do what they had done for you. Dear ones, it's catchy. You catch it. It goes in and sticks because you remember something that is of God. The message couldn't be clearer. Think these things this day. Stand tall in your compassion. It does not help you to cry for others. It helps you to stand and support others with your maturity and with your wisdom. And so it is.